Well, welcome to the BWP series show, uh, Patricia. Uh, it's an honor to meet you. Uh, I hear really good things about you. So, Patricia, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What's your story? Um, I'm 40 years old, married with three children, three boys, um, 11 years married. Um, I started off um, at Bishop Hour School and then continued to St. Rose's. Um, and then went to preset for my set form because um, St. Joseph's wasn't offering science at the time. And then after that, I really loved physics, chemistry, maths. I didn't like biology. So I decided to um, ask statistics to it and continue to do um, electrical engineering in tech. So after tech, um, well, within the time I spent at the university, I didn't have the opportunity to be traveling, I didn't have that luxury. So every vacation I used to go to Tigo to do my internship. And that started from second year um, all the way to my final year. So actually I never even applied for the job. Right after my um, internship, I was posted there for national service, fortunately. And then right after that, I got my first job. So I worked there for 14 years, um, ran through from basic installations, wiring of rooms, through the network operations, through to planning, and then fortunately in 2007, um, actually December 2006, I got promoted um, to become the CTO, the Chief Technology Officer. So I held that position for um, three and a half, close to four years. And then I got the Vodafone offer. And at that time I said, I guess it was time to make a move. Now within that period in Tigo, I decided to get my master's. So I went to University of Ghana. Because I had to blend that with school, uh, with work, I, I had I went through the executive MBA program, so that was a, a, the evening program. Um, and then after that, I realized I actually had to deal a lot with contracts and stuff like that. So I decided to go back to University of Ghana and take a law program. So wow. and it was a brief program, um, but it, it ran through virtually the full um, law program. And then um, I continued to learn the business school. I had the opportunity to do a brief course in executive leadership. Um, so by way of education, that's how the stretch has been. And then I moved on to Vodafone in January 2011, and I'm still here. Interesting, interesting. So if I understand correctly, you became CTO while you just had an undergrad degree? Yes. Wow. Yes. Nice. Yes. What's your, what's your philosophy in life? <laughs> If you want it, you'll get it, um, basically. So you have to work hard, work hard at it. Um, it means that it has, you have to be in tune with God and Christian. So wanting it means you know what God wants for you, right? And you're working according to his plan. And therefore you put everything, every effort, every weight, every time you have behind what you believe in and just make sure it happens, okay? Wow. Why technology? What drives you? It's interesting. I, I can't understand any other thing that anybody would want to do outside that. Um, I guess because I didn't, um, it's just intriguing for me, you know, systems that give results, <laughs> to put it in a very simple way. So you input and you get an output, and it translates into our way of life. So whatever we use at home, whatever we do, things we drive, whatever we do has a piece of technology in it. And it's it's very interesting. And there are very facets, a lot of areas around it. And I'm just touching a little bit of it actually in telecom. Wow. Uh, people are in manufacturing, design, I'm just in the telecom industry, generating minutes. Wow. One of the most interesting things I've heard about you is that um, most people that work with you weren't even aware you were pregnant until you just had your baby. <laughs> how do you how do you balance family life with being the CTO of a, of a multinational organization like Vodafone? I know you're very busy. It comes with a lot of sacrifice, I can promise you. Um, when I had my first son, um, I wasn't a CTO then. Well, I tried to manage it. But when I had my second, then I got promoted. And I had to, blend that with my MBA 
and with international travel. That didn't come cheap. And so I think family support was phenomenal. Um, my mother passed um, just before I had the second baby. So it was my mother-in-law who supported me. I think I have the most amazing husband in the world. <laughs> so he's a mechanical engineer, as busy as I am, but I think he understands what I do and he is supportive. So he's able to help me balance the time on when I can cook and when I can't cook and things like that. When I can do homework and when I can't do homework. But the third one was interesting because that's seven years after I'd had the second one. Um, and it seemed by the grace of God, it ran smoothly. So it was only when I had to go for my my antenatal at least time. Doctor had you be so you're back, okay. I had drugs in yes, no, yes, any problem, no, see you, and that's it, you know. And you're around month on month. For me, pregnancy is not a disease. I mean, um, if you're not like really getting other side effects, just carry yourself through as a woman, really. Um, because it's not your making, you have to do it as a woman, you're married, you have to have babies. So don't carry yourself as if it's a big deal, you know. Come to work, get your job done, go home, take your rest. And then when you have your baby, take your time off. I took my four months off. Fortunately, people only have an extra month. Um, so I took my full time off and came back refreshed, you know. And I had to close sometimes at three to go home and breastfeed my baby. Yes, I did. When we had evening programs, I made a sacrifice and put him on the bottle. But um, I think for me, it's about the mindset, you know, it's a, it's a mindset. You have to structure your time and tell yourself, I need to get this done, basically. And then get it done. Wow. Um, well, now, what would you tell any lady out there or a young person out there who's thinking about a career in technology once you go as far as you return? Uh, what steps would you give them to ensure that they end up like you, or at least? and the as successful as you are. My dear, go to school. Make no compromise along the way, as much as you can study. Um, and when you have studied, please make the efforts to get your internship done. It really helped me. Because you see, what we are taught in school um, is really put into practice when you get into industry. And the more you get the experience before you step into the job, you get the upper hand over the guy who comes in day one after, after his um, certificate. So use your vacation wisely. It doesn't matter, you don't have to start from the telecom industry, but get industry experience. So work in a bar, work. be a sales agent or somebody, but get the experience of communicating with people, interacting with people in the office. It makes a lot of difference. If it helps you to organize your life, you know how to dress to the office, things like that. And then when you're done with your internship, please um, get serious when you get the job. You don't have to expect to be the same as the boss who isn't being seen to make a lot of sacrifices. He or she made the sacrifices in the past. So if you have to stay then I went so many nights and slept in the office till morning, not because I didn't have anything doing at home, because the job had to be done, right? There are a lot of sacrifices along the way and it's a decision. It's a conscious decision. So make the conscious decision that you want to succeed and put in the time and the efforts, you know, and make the sacrifices along the way. And it, it will pay off, at least it paid off your mind. So. Beautiful, well, thank you very much, Patricia, for joining us today. It's been a very inspiring story, and I hope that uh, a lot of the youth are empowered out there. Uh, you've been on the BWP micro series. Thank you for joining us and stay empowered.